Starship is the best known rocket that will be fueled by liquid methane, but it might not be the first one to launch. So which methane powered rocket will launch first and which ones are even in the running? We'll dive into all the contenders and more, but first, thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Let's start at the big question regarding methane launch vehicles in general. Why methane? Why not stick with a better understood and well-tested fuel like kerosene or liquid hydrogen? Obviously, since so many companies want to use it, there must be some big advantages to methane, right? Well, there are. First off, methane-fueled rocket engines boast a higher specific impulse over kerosene engines. To see this in action, we can compare SpaceX's kerosene-burning Merlin engine with their methane-burning Raptor. The Merlin sea level engine has a 282 second specific impulse at sea level, while the Raptor 2 engine has a specific impulse of around 327 seconds at sea level. For those unaware, specific impulse is kind of like the rocket equivalent of miles per gallon for cars. It's how efficiently an engine turns propellant mass into thrust. And generally, a higher specific impulse is preferable. Now, don't take those numbers as gospel either. Raptor would be more efficient than Merlin regardless because of its full flow staged combustion cycle, but those numbers still give a general idea of how much more efficient methane can be. And in terms of thrust, kerosene actually wins over methane. Kerosene is just so much denser than methane, allowing more propellant to be burned at once. So kerosene does win in terms of potential thrust. Now when comparing liquid hydrogen to liquid methane, the details are flipped. Hydrogen is the king of efficiency for a rocket engine, but hydrogen engines simply don't produce thrust on the level of methane or especially kerosene engines. Hydrogen just has such a low density. And if you've been following the Artemis 1 launch campaign, you'll remember that hydrogen likes to leak. A lot. But that's what you get when you try to contain the literal smallest molecule in the universe. It likes to try to find tiny gaps to escape. So much so that NASA even expects and allows leaks of hydrogen at the pad during propellant loading, within certain margins of course. Finally, liquid hydrogen tanks usually require thick insulation because it's so immensely cold, and that insulation is extra mass that you need to haul around. So yeah, hydrogen is very tough to work with, making it an uncommon choice of fuel. So to summarize all that, methane essentially sits at a happy medium between hydrogen and kerosene. There are also two other big factors for choosing methane, reusability and off-world production. Methane makes for a great propellant for reusable systems for a few reasons. The first, and probably the biggest, is that methane produces no soot. When kerosene burns, it releases unburned carbon as an exhaust product. This carbon can build up inside and around an engine, but that isn't necessarily a deal breaker. I mean, look at how successful Merlin has been. But it's something that can get in the way and form clogs in the engine. That's why there has never been, and likely will never be, a full flow staged combustion kerosene engine. The carbon could clog the complex turbo machinery. Off-world production isn't a big deal to most companies using methane, but it sure is to SpaceX. Now, hydrogen can be produced off-world too, as long as you have a source of water or ice, but again, you run into the issue of leakage and thermal management. And kerosene could, in theory, be made off-world too, but it would be much more difficult and again suffers from the issues we discussed earlier. For SpaceX, this factor was one of the main reasons they chose liquid methane for Raptor. In fact, they originally intended for Raptor to burn hydrogen, but soon abandoned it for methane. Methane and oxygen can be made locally on Mars, the Moon, and many other destinations around the solar system. This combined with all the other benefits of methane is why Starship will use it. By producing propellants on off-world destinations, Starship can potentially make it all around the solar system. And speaking of Starship, let's get into the contenders in this so-called race to launch of methane rockets. Now Starship is probably the first rocket that comes to mind when you think of liquid methane and liquid oxygen, or methalox, launch vehicles. And while Starship technically has launched before, we're only counting orbital flight attempts in this comparison. As of writing, Starship's orbital flight is currently set for no earlier than around November, but there is a good chance it won't even launch this year. 
So unfortunately, unless something bad happens with the other contenders, it seems like Starship is out of this race. But to stay up to date on all things Starship, stay on the lookout for our Starbase update videos for all things Boca Chica. Next, let's look at another rocket, Vulcan. The United Launch Alliance's next rocket, Vulcan, also uses methane and liquid oxygen, and is powered by a set of two BE-4 engines supplied by Blue Origin. Blue Origin is also developing the BE-4 for their new Glenn rocket, and is planning to recover its first stage, similar to how SpaceX recovers Falcon 9, with a converted barge acting as a landing platform. The debut launch of New Glenn will likely take place around... 2024? 2025? But that's very fluid right now, and unfortunately, that means New Glenn is not in the race to be the first methane launch vehicle to fly. Now back to ULA, Vulcan is the successor for their Atlas and Delta rockets, allowing the company to eliminate the need for two separate rocket families and two different launch sites. Speaking of Delta, be sure to check out shop.nasaspaceflight.com to pick up a sick metal print from the most recent Delta IV heavy launch. Vulcan is designed for partial reuse, with a detachable engine section, allowing the cheaper part of the first stage, the tank section, to be expended, while still recovering the more expensive engines. BE-4 is currently undergoing final flight testing at Blue Origin site in Van Horn, Texas, and recently conducted the first long-duration firing of a flight engine. This was the first of two test firings that Flight Engine 2 will undergo before being shipped to ULA's factory in Decatur, Alabama. Flight Engine 1 will be tested and shipped out in the near future as well. Launch is currently expected for December of this year, but likely won't happen until the beginning of 2023. Also hot in the race for the first Methalox rocket is Terran-1. This two-stage rocket, built by Relativity Space, is close to making its debut launch and maybe winning the race. The 3D printed rocket uses nine Aeon-1 engines on its first stage, and an Aeon VAC on its second stage. The flight vehicle also recently performed an 82-second first stage test firing on the pad. It's unknown how many more tests they're planning before flight, but they might be close to getting the full rocket, including the second stage, onto the pad before it's made in flight. A flight before the end of 2022 is certainly very possible. But Terran-1 is not the only rocket by Relativity that will use methane. Down the line, Terran-R, a fully reusable rocket, will be built by the company. However, it's currently not expected to fly before 2024, and therefore is not in the contest to be the first methane-based rocket to launch. But the US isn't the only country in the race for methane-based rockets either. Over in China, a company called Landspace is in the contest too, with their ZQ-2 rocket. It can lift 4 tons of payload into low Earth orbit, with its 4 TQ-12 engines providing 67 metric tons of thrust each. The second stage uses methane as well, which, unlike Vulcan or New Glenn, makes this rocket fully methane-based. The rocket has appeared on their launch pad multiple times so far, but has left the pad recently to be prepared for its first flight. The company recently published footage from inside their factory, in which they state that they can produce engines for up to one rocket per month, which hopefully will allow for an increased cadence once the orbital prototype rocket performs its flight. And down the line, ZQ-2 might even cut into the launch cadence of the smaller Chen Zen rockets. Sadly, the company does not communicate their timelines publicly. However, the expectation is still that they might perform their maiden launch this year. They might be just short of beating relativity, but a win for land space is certainly not impossible. Another rocket from China that might use methane is the mighty Chen Zen 9. In an interview from April 2022, Long Lei Hao, the chief designer of the vehicle, shared information about the current design of the upcoming Super Heavy rocket. According to this update, the first stage will be powered by 26 Methalox engines. However, this rocket is far down the line and 100% not in the race to be the first to launch. It is a sign though that methane is the fuel of the future in China as well. So it seems like the race is actually between Terran 1 and ZQ2, at least for now. Should either be delayed by a few months, Vulcan or even Starship may become real contenders. Personally, I think Terran 1 can take home the trophy, but may the best rocket win. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. 
Brilliant is the premier online learning tool featuring dozens of courses letting you explore topics interactively, which has been proven to be the best way to learn. Their courses feature hands-on diagrams to help explain topics, which is something that definitely helps me understand concepts quickly. If you liked the discussion about propellants earlier in this video, then you should definitely check out their course called The Chemical Reaction. This course covers several areas of chemistry, including chemical reactions, which is exactly what happens inside rocket engines. You can check out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash NASA Spaceflight, and the first 200 viewers to check out the link will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching.